So you were studying uh, biology and zoology and botany in South Africa. You chose to come to the University of Melbourne for your PhD. Was that because of particular research being done at the University of Melbourne or because Australian frogs were cooler than South African frogs? Or, you know, what was it that brought you here as a really young researcher who had only ever lived in South Africa until that point? Partly I wanted to live somewhere else uh, than South Africa because I had lots of experience of Africa, but I hadn't travelled much other than that. And mm. I thought Australia sounds good. Um, <laughs> But more so because I knew uh, from my studies there that there was a man at the University of Melbourne called Murray Littlejohn who was an expert in the meaning of frog signals and how to deal with them and how to analyse them. And um, I thought if I was in his lab, I could probably uh, do more higher powered froggy work or right. more... Um, you know, technically um, advanced froggy work. And what got me interested was the, the sounds, the noises, and what they mean. I knew of frog work happening at the University of Melbourne, work being done on the, the fact that frogs make noises and, and what they mean. And um, in those days, frogs were super abundant. Mm. You know, they, they were, for people looking for f uh, good animals for field work, do field projects on, frogs were really good because there were so many of them and they were so easy to find and so easy to catch and so easy to handle. You know, if you're going to work on birds, you've got to get them out of the trees somehow. And if you've got to work on in Australian mammals, you have to stay up half the night, as some of us know. <laughs> but with frogs, um, back then, in the days of innocence and wonder, as we say, frogs were abundant, easy to come by. And they had this very conspicuous behaviour pattern of calling, which uh, enables you to ask and answer significant questions. Mm -hmm. and if you so, think about all the years of field work in different places and exploring different questions and working with different species, is there any particular memory that kind of really stands out as just epitomising for you those years of camaraderie and discovery and, and sh you know, shared uh, challenges in the field and adventure, you know, is there anything that you just think back to? I think the most alarming experience I had was um, I was working away quietly while you were recording your earphones because you had to be able to keep listening to the frog <clears throat> and I was squatting down with my earphones on and my microphone like this, which is actually through a fence because the pond's the other side of the fence and... Um, recording away quietly and I thought, yeah, all right. And then something went whew, right behind me and it was a cow. <laughs> and it was very curious about what I was doing and it came up and snuffled <laughs> down my neck and I almost jumped into the pond, I guess. <laughs> Just right. It was, uh, oh dear. Did you drop the microphone into the pond? I, I probably did, I think. <laughs> I think it took, me a, it took me a little while to recover. <laughs> Can you pinpoint a time at which you suddenly realised that climate change was going to be probably the pivotal, you know, impact on, on our lives into the future? I don't think I'd with any confidence put a, put a time on it, but may have even been those early 80s, somewhere like that, where mm. it became real in the sense that one knew of things happening mm. which were not simply climatic fluctuations but which were part of a long-term and uh, very, very difficult to reverse trend. Mm. And I think having known the diversity and abundance and joy of frogs in South Africa, I, I think it would have been heartbreaking to, mm. you know, f find yourself in a kitred world where a lot of what you knew and loved is gone. Thank you for sharing some of your experiences and hopefully you don't have too many more cows snuffling your neck when you're not <laughs> expecting it. <laughs> there are many worse things that could happen. <laughs> in, the, in South Africa it might have been a lion doing that. So. That's true. So yeah. a cow is a better option. <laughs> yes, yes, certainly. <laughs>